We're going to take a deep breath in, core tight, send our hips back, sit back, then rock and explode back up. What's up guys, Chandler Marchman here for liveanabolic.com and in today's video I'm gonna be sharing with you the top kettlebell exercises for men over the age of 40 that might be beginners to this style of training can do to help manipulate massive surges of the anabolic hormones that we as men need to be producing in order to live more powerfully, purposefully, and overall just having a better quality of life. Now, as you may or may not know, once us guys hit the age of 30, let alone 40, we start to see incremental decreases on a yearly basis in our natural production of testosterone, which is by far our most important male anabolic hormone that there is. It's responsible for helping us facilitate strength gains, size gains, increasing our sex drive, improving our structural integrity of, of all the tissue in our body, and overall just increasing our energy and vir like just virility, all right? Just everything that makes us a man looking like and feeling like a man starts to decline. So there's two ways for us to facilitate increases in that. One is gonna be diet. We're not gonna talk about that today. We'll save that for another day. But today, what we're gonna talk about is the other thing, which is gonna be our training. Proper training can facilitate not only a, a plug in that testosterone leak, but also reverse it so that we're increasing our testosterone levels in a way that allows us to both look like and feel like that man that we want to be. All right, so what we're gonna do today is talk about some of the fundamental kettlebell exercises that will very quickly help initiate massive increases in those testosterone levels so that we can look like and perform like the men that we wanna be. Now, when it comes to exercises that are gonna help us manipulate greater production of testosterone levels naturally, what we need to do is implement exercises that are going to place a large amount of stress on our body in one simple movement. And to discuss that, we need to talk about the fundamental movement patterns in general that allow us to help achieve this. All right, so first off, let me say this about all the fundamental movements as a beginner that we're gonna use with the kettlebell. Not only will they attack the muscle fibers that act as the primary movers of the kettlebell exercise that we're gonna do, but specific to kettlebells themselves, the actual structure of them require a lot of core engagement to help stabilize your spine to keep it in that powerful, neutral, safe position while doing said movement. So not only are you gonna get a lot of work done to the muscles responsible for moving that weight in whatever exercise you're gonna be doing, but simultaneously stressing the hell out of every muscle surrounding your spine, also known as your core. So let's now talk about what these fundamental movements are and how you can tackle them as a beginner to help quickly move you from beginner to a more advanced lifter and get the phenomenal gains in performance and aesthetics that utilizing these powerful tools can get you. All right, so before we get into each and every one of the eight fundamental kettlebell movement patterns that help facilitate greater surges in testosterone that allow for more strength, speed, explosiveness, size gains, fat loss, and ultimately have you increasing your levels of energy and overall virility, let me say this about any and all kettlebell exercise that you're gonna do. You're always gonna need to follow these three very important kettlebell training cues. Number one, keep your core tight. I don't wanna see you sucking in, I wanna see you pushing out, flexing hard as if you were going to brace for a punch in your gut. Doing this will help insulate your spine, keep it in a neutral position, and ultimately allow you to move powerfully and forcefully without any possibility of injury, all right? So first cue, core tight. The next thing you wanna focus on is keeping your shoulders packed. What I mean by that is scapular control. We wanna keep our scapula retracted and depressed. That in conjunction with keeping your core tight will allow for all move, 
movement in all planes to be safe, sturdy, and powerful. So you're gonna avoid injury and maximize your gains while using each and every one of the kettlebell exercises. And the last one we wanna focus on is keeping your joints stepped. Each and every one of the fundamental movements that we're gonna go through require you to keep your joints stacked on top of each other to prevent any power leaks and to avoid injury. Whether that's the deadlift, where we're right here hinging back, we wanna keep our knees on top of our ankles, all right? Whether it's that or a press, we want to keep our elbow underneath our wrist and our shoulder underneath our elbow, all right, so stack vertically, whether it's, it's that, the deadlift, or the squat too. Squat, we want to keep this proper alignment, all right? So core tight, shoulders packed, joint stack. Those three cues are going to be ones that you follow for every single one of the kettlebell exercise that we're going to use, and that will put you in the best possible position to get the most out of each and every rep that you do with these eight fundamental movements. All right, guys, our first and most fundamental movement that we're gonna use with the kettlebell is gonna be a hinge, all right? It's the simplest movement that you can do in the gym in general. It has a high degree of functionality with daily life. All it is is you hinging back and picking up a weight. When doing these, the first progression is always going to be a simple single kettlebell deadlift. So feet about shoulder width apart, toes slightly apart. We're going to keep our heels down. We're going to push our knees out to help better recruit our hamstrings and glutes. As we're hinging back, poking our butt back, we want to make sure our knees and our ankles are on top of each other, aligned vertically, perpendicular to the ground. We're squeezing nice and tight. We don't want to have our elbows pushed out like this. We want to externally rotate our shoulders, internally rotate those elbows, and keep our core tight, shoulders packed, joints stacked. And from here, we're gonna pull our hips through into hip extension. Poke our butt back, pull through. This is a great posterior movement. All right, I'll do it from the side so you can see how my hips are tracking during this movement. All right, set up right in between your heels. Hinge back, externally rotate your shoulders, pull the hips through. Control down, accelerate it up, fire those glutes, stand up tall with it. Like I said, good hinge movement isn't just going to work your posterior, your hamstrings, your glutes, your rectus spinae, your lower back, and also is gonna hit your core, your upper back, and your lats as well, all right? So, after that, now we're going to do the more ballistic hinge movement that is the fundamental ballistic movement of all kettlebell training, the kettlebell swing. Now, after we've mastered the simple hinge-based deadlift, and you feel comfortable with that movement pattern, the next level up, the next progression to that is the king of ballistic kettlebell training, which is the double hand swing, all right? It's gonna tackle the same things, it's just gonna do so in more of a pendulum-based explosive manner. So, what we're gonna do with the double hand swing is our setup is gonna be virtually the same um, as far as how we wanna activate muscles, but our feet are gonna be before you know the first rep to help initiate it, our feet are gonna be about in between six inches to 12 inches behind the, the kettlebell itself. The reason we wanna do that is because after we set up, pre tension our body, tighten up our core, uh, depress our shoulders, keep them packed, and keep those heels down and knees out to help better recruit our posterior, we then want to be able to pull that kettlebell into our hip pocket, all right? So right into this hip crease so that we can initiate that first swing powerfully and explosively, all right? Remember, when doing swings, it is a hip extension dominant movement. This is not a front raise. The only thing tied on your arms is your grip, okay? Not a front raise, it is a hip extension ballistic movement. So we wanna pull it back into our hip crease and drive it through with powerful contraction of our glutes to help initiate that hip extension. Here's what it's gonna look like. 
All right, so nice and tight, hold in her hip crease, drive through. One of the things that I always remind people of is that if you're doing a kettlebell swing and that, that like the actual ball, if you will, the, the bell is going beneath your knee line and you're dropping that torso, you're putting yourself in harm's way. So remember, keep it short and tight. Small tight arc uh, or pendulum of movement, and that's what allows for greater overall concentration of the muscles that you want to be working, which are predominantly your core and your glutes, hamstrings, and erector spine. So here's what it looks like from the side. Remember, keep that bell pulled in the hip crease and then drive through with powerful contraction of your glutes, hamstrings, and uh, toe contraction of your core to help stabilize that spine. So here we go, nice and tight. There we go. Those are gonna be the hinge-based movement patterns that allow for us to increase and manipulate greater elevation in our testosterone. Next, we're gonna move into our squats. All right guys, our second fundamental kettlebell movement pattern uh, is gonna be our squat variations. Now, squats in general, when not properly done, are hellacious on your joints, specifically your knees. So what I'm gonna do for you guys, given the fact that this video is specifically geared for beginners, is do the same thing I do for all my clients when teaching them how to squat. And that's gonna be not necessarily squatting with a, a free movement, all right? So we're not gonna do a free squat. We're going to squat onto a box. Why do we wanna squat onto a box with all our different beginner kettlebell variations? Very simply put, it is going to help make sure that we properly track our hips so that during initiation of the squat, we don't have the bad habit of going down. We are forced to move our hips and track them back to find the seat that we're sitting onto before exploding up with that powerful box squat movement. So the first exercise we're going to do, the first kettlebell squat variation we're gonna do is going to be our goblet box squat. The reason I like a goblet squat is uh, the fact that not only is it going to help teach us to properly um, send our hips back, proper hip tracking, it's also going to force us to have good upper body and core engagement because that kettlebell in the goblet position is gonna to wanna to pull us into thoracic flexion. So we have to forcefully stay nice and tight via what's called reactive neuromuscular training, all right? This is the type of exercise this is, in order to activate the areas that need to be activated to help facilitate a more synergistic and athletic, safe, powerful squat movement. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get the kettlebell in my goblet position. I've got my hands in the crook of the horns, shoulders externally rotated, elbows tucked in, my feet are planted into the ground, toes slightly out, knees pushed out, all right, joints stacked, so knees on top of our ankles. We're going to take a deep breath in, core tight, send our hips back, sit back, then rock and explode back up. Sit back, find the seat, explode up. Back, find the seat, explode up. All right, I don't wanna see any plopping, none of that. So hips back, core tight, find the seat, rock back, explode up, all right? This will not only improve hip engagement, so posterior engagement during the squat and better teach the squat moving pattern, but also help simultaneously improve upper body involvement so that you're squatting not as an exclusive leg movement, but as a total body synergistic unit, all right? That is the biggest thing with squats. It is a total body movement. You gotta move synergistically and athletically to do it effectively. Now, after our goblet squat, the next variation that we're gonna do to improve not just our, our, our movement pattern of nailing down that squat, but also increase core strength 
is an anti-lateral flexion focused rack squat. Again, we're gonna do it onto a box. So rack position, same thing. Nice and tight, push your knees out, heels down, explode up, find the seat. What this is gonna do is not only is it going to help nail down and teach us the proper way to squat by sending our hips back, that proper tracking, but it's also going to force better engagement of our core by having that offset manner that the kettlebell is loaded on. It's gonna pull us to the side that the kettlebell is loaded on, and that anti-lateral flexion component of it forces us to keep that neutral spine position to make sure everything is properly engaged while we're squatting. So, all in all, goblet box squat is going to be your first fundamental movement that you want to nail down with a kettlebell. And once you get more comfortable with that and understand how you properly hit the, you know, track the hips back, then go and do the same thing with a rack squat into the box, all right? Once you get more comfortable with that, then you can eliminate the box. And if your knees aren't giving you any problems, you can move into a goblet regular squat and obviously a rack squat. And one last thing, when doing rack squats, whether onto a box or free, make sure you even things out. Don't just do it on one side. Make sure you balance it out with the other. So remember, goblet into rack, box into free, core tight, shoulders packed, joint stack, move powerfully but purposefully. All right guys, our third fundamental kettlebell movement for beginners is gonna be our unilateral or single leg kettlebell work, all right? This is gonna be something that um, I like to utilize, especially because as, as lifters, as guys, we, we, we so often tend to lean too heavily on our bilateral movements, meaning our squats and our deadlifts that have balanced force application to the ground, all right? So what happens is because we have dominant sides, upper body and also lower body, we develop imbalances both in the aesthetics as well as the performance end of the equation. So one leg might be more developed and stronger than the other leg. So to prevent that from happening, we need to address it by doing unilateral kettlebell work. And that's gonna be very simply some variation of a lunge and some variation of a step up. So what I'm gonna do is share with you the simplest and most fundamental unilateral leg movements you can do with the kettlebell on each one of those different exercises. First, we'll start with our lunge. Fundamental, simplest one to do to begin with is a goblet position. This is gonna be a great way to not just work posterior, but also our upper back and core to prevent the kettlebell from pulling us forward. So, I like doing reverse lunges when doing them joint step this knee right here on top of that ankle and drive that front heel into the ground obviously whatever you do on one side doing the other now after we nail down that we're then going to do the same thing in the rack position again we want to be contralateral in our movement so with this if we're racked on the right side make it contralateral for more core engagement, we want our left leg to be the drive leg. So we're gonna send this leg back, again, core tight, shoulders packed, joint stack, knee on top of ankle, drive. Don't let this kettlebell pull you into lateral flexion or thoracic flexion, okay? All right, so those are gonna be our lunge variations. Next, we have our step up, and it's gonna be the same thing. All right, so again, start, the less demanding is gonna be goblet position. It's going to pulse forward in thoracic flexion. Core tight, shoulders packed. Upper back activated to prevent that. Drive that heel to the ground. Try to minimize the assistance of that land leg. Explode up, control descent, right? Obviously, whatever you do for that leg, do for the other leg, and then Again, contralateral in nature. Improve core engagement by doing it contralateral. Meaning this is gonna be the drive leg and this is the side of the load of the kettlebell. Woo! 
Again, not only is that going to really help activate our posterior hamstrings, glutes, lower back, upper back, uh, quads, but it's also going to hit our core because of the offset nature of both of the types of movements we're doing. Anti-thoracic flexion, forcing us to stay tight to prevent the kettlebell pulling us forward, and anti-lateral flexion from preventing that kettlebell from pulling us to the side that the kettlebell is loaded on. So, remember your cues with whatever you're doing. Core tight, shoulders packed, joints stacked. Move powerfully, but purposefully. All right guys, our fourth fundamental kettlebell movement for beginners is going to be a horizontal push, okay? This is very, um, very similar to what you would do with any dumbbell or barbell. It's just a push variation that you're gonna do in the horizontal plane. So you're gonna be lying down either on a flat bench, on the ground, or on a slight incline and pushing a weight out over your body, all right? So what's gonna make this one really uh, kinda improve, not just the engagement you get in obviously your chest, your interior delts and your triceps, but also your upper back and really a lot in your core is the anti-rotation aspect of it. So not only will you be hitting the primary muscles um, that we talked about, chest, shoulders, triceps, but also the stabilizing muscles like your upper back to help stabilize the head of the humerus while it's pressing and a lot with your core to help prevent the kettlebell given the fact that it's loaded in an offset manner uh, from pulling you into a degree of rotation that has you pulling off the bench itself. So remember when doing these, core tight, shoulders packed, joint stack, all right? So here's what it's gonna look like. Make sure when you're doing these, hold the kettlebell and tuck it in as you dismount um, or get in position with the bench itself. So here we go. So we got our scapula dug in, core nice and tight, feet planted. This hand is out here. You don't want to hook it on the bench. We want to actively stabilize instead of passively. So out here, core tight. Don't let it pull you into rotation. And there you go. Like you said, that kettlebell is going to want to pull you into rotation. Don't let it. Not only firing a lot with the primary movers of this horizontal push, uh, obviously your chest, anterior delts and triceps, but also a lot in your core. So we're getting a lot of work done in one very simple fundamental movement. All right guys, our fifth fundamental kettlebell movement pattern is going to be the antagonist movement pattern as the last one. All right, so we already did our horizontal push. Now we're going to balance it out with a horizontal pull. This too will be an anti-rotation movement. So it's gonna to wanna to pull you into rotation as you're nailing down the movement itself. So not only will you be getting a lot of work done in your back, but also a ton of work in your core to help stabilize your spine as you're doing this movement in general. And here is what you're gonna to do to help really improve that core engagement in conjunction with your lat and upper back engagement. So a lot of times I see People do a staggered stance row. Nothing wrong with that. Great way to build a lot of size and strength in your lats. But what you're missing from that, especially for those guys out there that want to increase core strength and be able to get more done in less time with their workouts, say they have not a lot of time to train, to get more from your row, I always like doing it with a set stance. So adding this anti-rotation aspect of it via a less demanding but still core engaging movement like this is a phenomenal way to get more done in less time. Now, the next progression up from that is to do the same anti-rotation aspect of it but leveled up, increasing in the core demand by loading it outside of your feet. All right, so here, get in position, and you're gonna feel this not only in your lats a whole lot, but also in your core to prevent that kettlebell from pulling you into a degree of rotation of your spine. So not only will it hit your lats and your upper back extremely hard, given the primary movers and the muscles responsible for that movement, 
but also your core to prevent that rotation and allow you to move powerfully and safely at the same time. All right guys, on to our sixth fundamental kettlebell movement pattern for beginners. This one is going to follow the same as our horizontal push. It's just going to be, instead of the horizontal, we're going to do vertical, all right? So all this is gonna be is your overhead press variations. And when we're talking about overhead presses for beginners, the most fundamental one is going to be the standing overhead press. I like to do this standing versus on a military bench because it forces you to actively engage your core while pressing, unlike the military press does. So what we're gonna do is just an offset single kettlebell clean into overhead press. Remember what your overhead press is? We wanna keep our core nice and tight. We wanna keep our shoulders packed. So nothing out here in front. We wanna, boom, keep it tucked right here, retracted and depressed to help better engage uh, not just our core, but also have it co-contracting with our upper back, which helps stabilize the humerus as it's moving up into the overhead lockout position. And the last thing we want to focus on is keeping those joints stacked. That means um, in the initiation process, in the rack position, our wrist is on top of our elbow. And as we press, we want to make sure everything is stacked vertically. That means at lockout, everything can be drawn into a straight line from our wrist all the way down to our ankle. That means wrist on top of elbow, elbow on top of shoulder, shoulder on top of hip, hip on top of knee, and knee on top of ankle. None of this outcome right here. We want head through, stack joints from top to bottom. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Respect the movement, clean it up. All right, core nice and tight. Don't allow this kettlebell to pull you into lateral flexion or thoracic flexion. All right, core nice and tight, neutral spine, and press up, head through. Obviously, whatever you do on one side, balance it out on the other. This won't just help you actively um, stress the primary muscles responsible for this vertical pressing pattern, obviously your anterior delts and your triceps, but also your upper back, as well as your core to help stabilize your spine throughout the entire movement itself. All right guys, our seventh fundamental movement pattern for beginners isn't necessarily going to be a kettlebell movement, but it's one that is imperative for you to program in because of the need for you to develop balance and symmetry and the stimulation that you have with your workouts. And here's what I mean by that. Given the fact that we have to balance out our horizontal presses with our horizontal pulls, we also want to do the same thing with our vertical presses. And obviously the antagonist movement to that vertical press is gonna be a vertical pull. And what's gonna work as a vertical pull? Body weight movement, simple pull up or chin up, or if you can't do one of those, you can do a band assisted one or a simple pull down machine. The reason we want to incorporate that in, even though it's not necessarily a kettlebell movement, is the fact that it will help get you that balance and symmetry in how you look and how you perform. So the next one is just going to be a simple vertical pull. This can be done, like I said, via a simple pull up, Nothing crazy, squeeze the bar, pull your elbows down to your back pocket. You can do the same thing with the chin up. Alter the width of the grip, whether it be pronated, supinated, neutral grip, or you can do um, do it with band assisted uh, movement as well. Or if you don't have the ability to do that, simply do a cable pull down or a band pull down. What's most important is that you do some type of vertical pull to help balance out the stress you place your body under with that vertical push. All right, the eighth and final fundamental kettlebell movement that we're going to implement 
to help see those massive spikes in testosterone that ultimately help us live a more empowered male existence are going to be our kettlebell carry variations. The reason I love adding carries to any circuit that you do is the fact that it's very simple to execute and is a fantastic way to increase the ultimate time under tension of whatever set or circuit that you're doing and do so in a way that also not just works on building the the, uh, the strength endurance of the primary muscles responsible for stabilizing, but also your core. Not only that, but it's ultimately going to help extend the set so that you have that increased heart rate that also elevates your metabolic rate and allows for greater fat loss as well. All right, so when it comes to carry variations, there are four fundamental ones that we're going to utilize as a beginner. I'll share with you each and every one and we'll start with the most demanding of them because I'm a firm believer in whatever circuit or workout that you do, you always want to start things out with the most demanding movement and then transition into the less demanding. All right, so we'll first start with the most demanding of all carry variations, which is going to be an offset waiter's walk. Now, just, just like I said, it's this is demanding, but it's also something that I'd feel completely comfortable having a beginner do once they prove that they can press a weight overhead. So that is gonna give you an idea of what we're gonna do here. If you notice, before we even start, everything is nice, locked out, joints stacked. So our core tight, shoulders packed, joints stacked. What makes this a killer movement is the fact that this kettlebell is gonna to wanna to pull us all over as we're walking. We need to keep it locked out and we need to keep our core and upper back tight to allow that spine to be stable in a neutral position. So it's a great anti-lateral flexion movement that will help really increase upper back strength, shoulder strength, and especially core strength. So that is gonna be our first one. Our next one, next most demanding, is gonna be that next level, which is gonna be a rack walk, all right? Again, offset in nature, get it in rack position, all right? Elbow underneath our wrist, tucked in, shoulder externally rotated, core tight. This kettlebell is gonna wanna pull you forward in a thoracic flexion into the side that it's loaded on into lateral flexion. You need to stay tall and tight to prevent that from happening. So again, purposefully step, don't try to rush it, slow, controlled, methodical, purposeful steps. The whole time, you can core tight. Stay tall and tight when doing these. All right, now, the next we're gonna do is probably our simplest of the anti-lateral flexion movements, and that's gonna be the single arm farmer's walk. So, have the kettlebell loaded outside of your steps, for your feet, hinge back, core tight. Again, core tight, shoulders packed. Stay tall and tight. Don't let it pull you down into lateral flexion. Don't overcompensate by leaning to offset it. Keep that spine tall and tight. All right, now let's talk about our last one. Our overhead, our waiter's walk right there, our rack carry and our single arm farmers were all anti-lateral flexion in nature. The last one we're gonna do is anti-thoracic flexion in nature, meaning we're gonna have the kettlebell in the goblet position right here, all right, as we would for a goblet squat, and we're gonna walk with it. Whole time, keeping the core tight, shoulders packed. This kettle is gonna pull us forward. We gotta keep our core tight and upper back tight to prevent that from happening. For all you guys out there sitting at a desk all day, this is gonna be a great one to help open up, open you up, and really get that upper back working so that you have improved posture. All right, so these are all gonna be fantastic movements to really boost the upper back strength and the core strength you need to improve posture, but ultimately fantastic ways to extend whatever set that you're doing during your workout. So 
add them to the very end and that is going to be a very simple way to improve the overall training economy with every workout that you do with kettlebells or any other weights that you decide to work with. Hey guys, thanks for checking out today's liveanabolic.com video. If you enjoyed it and want more of the same, share with you here in the future, then do me a solid. Number one, hit the thumbs up button so I know we're on the right track for giving you guys what you're looking for out of your training experience. And to make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the alert icon so you're notified the second we drop new videos here every day to help you improve how you look and how you perform as a man after hitting the age of 40.